Okay, are you ready for your penultimate act? Yay! Yay! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our second Anna for this evening. Anna! Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna. I like to think of myself as curious, empathetic, and creative. My passion is getting people excited about change through human-centered design. Which basically means that I may put adults out of their comfort zones by making them play, build stuff with their hands, and learn through making mistakes. Convincing them that getting in touch with their inner child will make them better problem solvers, lead to better results, and ultimately a better world. It's fun. It works, but some people are still trying to pay me in Monopoly money. <laughs> <laughs> Convincing adults to adopt a child's mindset can be a challenge. Everybody's already so has already mastered the skills of breaking all the stuff. Our social structures, the earth, and each other. The only childish skill we're still most likely to resort to is avoiding all responsibility. <laughs> so, but children also possess other essential problem-solving skills. They relish in cooperative play, they have unlimited imagination, and they will ask the most unexpected questions. Like my friend's daughter, Ela, the other day. Ani, is the reason you still don't have a boyfriend because you have small boobs? <laughs> hmm, let me think. Well, you don't have any boobs, and I hear you now have three boyfriends. What's your secret? I really wanted to know. I've been trying to get in touch with my inner child, my first feeling, for 10 years now, in therapy. I just celebrated with a new self-help book, nine ambitious personal goals, and a bottle of gin. The gin was on sale. So in the beginning, I was feeling quite proud of myself you know, peeling off the onion, getting in touch with my feelings, doing all the hard work. But that was until about nine months in when I found out it's all my parents' fault. <laughs> I finally had somebody to blame for believing that um, competence, humility, and integrity will get me places. <laughs> And that uh, I too will meet my Prince Charming despite having small boobs. <laughs> so, doing therapy is sometimes like opening a Pandora's box over and over again. Finding out all the different ways that you're messed up and trying to accept all the parts that you don't like about yourself. <laughs> As you can see, it's working out great for me. <laughs> I turn to children for dating advice. <laughs> but without therapy, <clears throat> I probably would have never left my secure corporate job for the invigorating struggles of freelancing. <laughs> I would still be blissfully oblivious of all the things that make me vulnerable, mm -hmm. enigmatic, and weird. <laughs> and I probably would never have known that I can still mess up my children 
but send them to therapy before they found it. It's <laughs> not my fault. Just like Baldrick, I now have a cunning plan. <laughs> Children, before adults mess them up, also have superpowers. <clears throat> An afternoon walk the other day with my friend's kids uh, turned into a championship in uh, wild asparagus picking. So Sara, the nine-year-old with glasses, was finding all these invisible green toothpicks in the pointy bushes, <laughs> while I was still trying to hide the aftermaths of the previous evening behind my sunglasses. <laughs> she kept on going, Annie, I found another one. <laughs> you missed that one there. I have so many, I can barely hold them. So as you can see, I was getting a bit frustrated at some point, and at 5 p.m., it was a bit late to blame it on the gin. <laughs> So I was like, okay, Sara, what are these x-ray vision glasses that you're using? I know your sister talks to dead mice. I want your superpower. Because who doesn't want superpowers, right? If I could have one superpower, it would be the ability to teleport. To travel from one place to another in an instant. To avoid rush hour traffic jams airport check-in queues, and meeting ex-boyfriends with pregnant girlfriends that look like supermodels. <laughs> Their boobs are huge. <laughs> so I feel also quite fortunate that I get to travel a lot and meet interesting people from all these different countries. But there's always this awkward moment of anticipation when you tell somebody you're from Slovenia. <laughs> the hope of their pupils dilating in recognition and saying, I loved it, been there. <laughs> then there's the indifference when they tell you of their drive-through experience on their way to the beautiful Croatian coast. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the horror of them recognizing it as the birthplace of Melania. <laughs> so I wonder what superpower Melania possessed when she was a child. <laughs> was it the ability to eat all the cheeseburgers in the world without gaining an ounce? <laughs> Accurately predicting the future of spoiled brats across the Atlantic? <laughs> or knowing how to become the first villain's wife without having to utter a coherent sentence in English. <laughs> so I think if we want to make this world a better place, uh, adopting a child's mindset could be our best bet. Let's embrace being more curious, empathetic, and creative. This is how Louis Braille adopted, uh, invented uh, the alphabet of raised dots at 15 after he stumbled upon the not-so-sophisticated French army's communication system. This is how Greta Thunberg showed us that sitting in front of a parliament to get out of school can turn into a global climate change movement. And this is why I made it my mission to convince adults that playing with Legos will help them build better solutions that will have a positive impact on people's lives and ultimately a better world. Mm -hmm. <laughs>